Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. All right, so today I'll try to remove the reverb from this recording using tools that are available in Premiere Audition and an amazing restoration tool called Isotope RX. This video is brought to you by Bavegang Sound Design. We provide astonishing sound for your video, we edit your voice track, add amazing sound effects that make the visual pop out and create a perfect mix. We have fixed prices, which you can check on our website, and a quick three steps ordering process. Bring your video to the next level with Bavegang Sound Design. So the first thing I want to say is that Reducing reverb is very difficult, and even after using the advanced tools that we have today, it probably won't sound great, but it will make it sound better. So let's compare different the reverb tools, all right? So if you work with Premiere, you'll have access to the audio tools that you can find in the audio tab. All you have to do is to go to the audio tab, select your clip, and then you have editing options based on your audio type. We are trying to fix a voice recording, so I'm clicking dialogue. Now we have a few options, loudness, repair, clarity, and creative. Let's click on repair. Inside you have the reduce reverb scroll bar. Now let's just enable, and I'm going to put it all the way to zero and start increasing and listening. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. All right, so let's listen to it before and after. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. All right, so it's not bad, and it's a little better than before, but we can do even better with more advanced tools. So I'm going to deselect the reduce reverb and go back to editing. And now let's talk about Audition. For those of you who are also subscribed to Audition, here is a quick way of dealing with reverb. Let's send this clip to Audition by right-clicking it and selecting Edit Clip in Adobe Audition. Okay, so now we're in the Waveform Editor. Let's go to Effect, Noise Reduction, the Reverb, and this is the the Reverb tool. Now, if you don't want to spend too much time, all you have to do is to change the percentage and find the best balance possible between reducing reverb and keeping the dialogue clear. All right, so let's try it now. Clicking preview. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I starting with zero. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. Okay, so it's not bad, but if you want to dive a little deeper, let me just give you a quick explanation of what we're seeing here. So this is basically a spectrum analyzer that shows the amount of reduction that is being applied. And humans can detect sounds in a frequency range from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. The horizontal axis represents this range of frequencies. And on the vertical axis, there's the loudness of each frequency. This is also how parametric equalizers look like. Check out our video on how to use EQ to make your voice sound better so you can keep on enhancing the dialogue after you reduce the reverb. The only additional setting that can affect the reduction of the reverb in this tool is the processing focus. The default one is focus on all frequencies. And then you have all kinds of options here. Does it change anything? Let's just try and listen. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good... 
Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really In this specific example, I think that focus on all frequencies sound better. And especially if you feel that you don't have enough high frequencies, like if your voice is becoming really muffled and unclear, you can focus on lower frequencies and then the sound will be less affected by this tool, which means that it can be a little clearer. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo. Okay, so I'm just clicking apply and just by saving it inside audition, save, it's automatically updated in Premiere. The next tool that we'll test is Isotope RX Dialog D Reverb. This is a module that comes with Isotope RX Advanced, which is an industry standard toolkit that we sound designers use all the time to restore damaged recordings. This is the Isotope RX Audio Editor, and it's quite similar to what you can find in Audition, but better. So I'll just drag my audio clip to the editor. On the right side, you have a menu with all the modules, and here is the Dialog D Reverb tool. I always set the reduction to the lowest, the ambience preservation to 10%, and the separation algorithm is set to advanced joint channels because it offers the highest quality results. The only thing that is left is to change the sensitivity bar and check how it sounds. Remember that when reducing reverb or noise, we always want to find the right balance between clarity and artifacts, which means that the more you push this selection up, the less you'll hear the reverb, but at a certain point, your voice will sound muffled and all the clarity goes away, which actually makes things worse. The best way to make sure you maintain perspective in relation to the original audio is to use the compare feature which stores different settings and lets you compare between them. So here is a list of all the different sets of settings that we will compare. So the first one called original audio gives us a point of comparison with the original audio file. So let's just remove that. Then I simply change the sensitivity to two, compare, four, compare, you can see it added here, and let's try six. Now let's preview all the options. This is the original file, preview. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received This is the sensitivity set to two. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received record it's much better. Uh, sensitivity set to four. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received record and six. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times. Mm, that's too much. So the first option with the sensitivity set to two gives me the best result. Let's hear it again. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. But I want to reduce a little bit of ambience, so by clicking on view settings, it shows the settings of the selection, and then I can change the ambience preservation. I'm going to increase the sensitivity to two and a half. Click compare. Just to give it a little bit more of reduction. Let's check it. Hey guys, as a sound designer, I can't count the number of times I received recordings with a lot of echo or reverb, which really sounds bad. This is a good example of why you should never record in a corridor. All right, so I think this is much, much, much better. And that's it for today. There are a lot of other very efficient tools on the market, but I just wanted to cover the tools that are available to you on Premiere. 
and Audition and also to show you what I use, which is Isotope RX. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Don't forget to click the like button and see you next time.